What's up everybody, Sparewood Gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on Space Engineers. Uh, when we left off in the last episode, we were still working on our... I'm dubbing it the SWATBOT type ship, um, for lack of a better name at the moment. And um, I switched over to Creative just to do some design. Now, I if I continue the survival, if we don't like stop, but I keep the survival Let's Play going, what I'll probably end up doing is just designing it in Creative, and then what I'll probably do is load up the um, save game before I switched over to Creative, and I'll break this whole thing down and just paste in a projector, not paste in, but build a projector in with a blueprint, and then let the Nanite system build it from there. And so I'm thinking that would be the best way to go, because that way I can freely design it without having to wait for the Nanite system and all that kind of stuff, but then I can kind of jump back um, to survival progress, if you want to if you want to put it that way. So this episode is going to be a little bit weird. I'm going to give you that uh, heads up right now, because a uh, series of events was going on in terms of I was not really able to record very conveniently, um, and so I found myself just, it was like, well, rather than waste the time, I just went ahead and started building, because I'm always talking about I didn't have time to work on stuff off camera, so I was like, well, I had set aside time to record, but wasn't able to record, so might as well just, you know, work on the ship type of thing. So I think I've got it pretty much finished, uh, at least for the most part of this part. I haven't started on the atmospheric ring yet, or atmosphere, however you want to call it. Um, ATR, um, uh, TM, atmospheric transfer ring. That, yeah, ATR, little, little TM. Um, you heard it here first, I guess. <laughs> So, but this episode's going to be a little choppy because I'm going to jump around to a couple of different places um, in different progressions of save game files that I had backed up. And so with that, actually, no, I might not have to. I might just jump to the latest one and then jump back. Um, well, I might not even jump back now that I think about it because we'll probably start working on the ring. Um, so a couple of things I wanted to point out. Um, a few people had mentioned having this thing too armed and what is the purpose. So I wanted, and <laughs> at the risk of aging myself, which to me, all of my references and things are always, you know, current <laughs> and they're not anymore. Um, I keep forgetting that not everyone is, is my age. And so sometimes when you're younger, they're like, well, what, what, what is he talking about? And it's like, oh gosh, there's people that don't know about this. So for reference, when I said a SWAT bot type ship, it's from the show Sonic the Hedgehog. It was a Saturday morning cartoon and it usually is referred to as Sonic Satam or uh, that's how I always said it anyway, but it's S-A-T-A-M for Saturday AM cartoon. And it looks like this. I found this shot on some Wikipedia or some wiki for um, for the Sonic show. And that's what I had in my head. Grant you, I hadn't seen it in a while. I just remembered you can kind of tell like the, the circular bubble type wheel looking things on the back end and how it kind of slopes towards the front. So that was kind of the basic premise. Now, honestly, like I said, I hadn't looked at it in a while, and when I looked it up to find a picture, I actually realized I probably should have done standard slopes, like um, like this guy right here, instead of doing the ramps. I did it thinking you would give it more of a slope, but after you look at that on the, on the picture, it actually looks a little bit fatter, so I probably should have done it fatter. Um, I did try and put a fatter nose with slopes here. It didn't look right. This this cockpit has a slope angle, and so it just didn't work right. And I like this cockpit. I probably should have put the other one on there again, and it would have made a more fatter, rounded edge. But I really didn't think they were that pudgy. So, um, so yeah, that was kind of the basic thought process. Hence, these back little... Um, uh, bubbles, I guess? I don't know what you would call those, that design, but hence that type of shape on the back was what I was kind of going for. So that should give you an idea. F as for what it's for, uh, multi-purpose, really, is I was just designing it to be a small ship that could go out into space and do stuff and then come back. So I needed cargo in case I, you know, 
stole stuff from cargo ships out there and looted them. I needed oxygen, obviously, for, you know, breathability, batteries. Um, actually, I didn't really put too much else on here. There wasn't, like, you know, but as far as weaponry go, it was for defense and attack. So I guess you could say it's a exploration slash small attack ship. If you, if you, if I really had to narrow the purpose down, um, but in all fairness, I have not done much ship-to-ship -ship combat in Space Engineers in literally. It's probably been years um, that because I've been running my channel for four or five years now, and started with Space Engineers a year into running my channel, maybe a little less than that, and have been doing it ever since. So I had started doing videos before they even had the cargo ships to attack the pirates and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so it was usually just weird. A lot of you that have followed my channel for a long time already know this, but it was usually just weird that whenever they introduced that, I was doing like a let's build or something. And um, then I would do survival stuff, but I would never get to other ships. And so it was like, I never really ran across them. So I haven't really done much combat. Uh, so I usually just throw guns everywhere and hope that's enough weaponry, but I don't really know what would be good weaponry and what wouldn't. And I have to admit, I know it. some people might say it's a little cheaty, but I really have been tempted to throw the energy shield mod in here, mainly for one reason, as a YouTuber. I don't want to have to rebuild this sucker again. Though, having said that, with a blueprint, a projector, and a nanite system with a drill platform, having to rebuild it again wouldn't be detrimental so i may not but i do like the shields thing because if you have enough shields the blocks never get hurt you don't have to repair it um so yeah there's that um i also got a comment talking about i thought we weren't switching to creative again to avoid what happened last season where it turned into a let's build within a let's play survival series and two reasons one um I switched it because I felt like I was taking too long on some of this stuff and I wanted to expedite it a little bit so creative was the easiest way to do that. Two, I wasn't sure if I was going to keep doing this or not. I'm still a little on the fence as far as if I would switch gears and do a different type of series or something like that so it may end, have ended up ending the same way the, the other one did. But I at the moment intend to, once it's done, switch back to survival and do what I said with the projector and the nanite thing. That's my intent at the moment. I'm going to do a little bit more real talk stuff afterwards, but let's head on over to the more current build. Alrighty, so here we have, well, actually I have three stages essentially, but this guy over here is essentially the currently finished product. And as you can tell, I did actually switch out the weapons over here. I did take those out. I switched and put the rocket launcher up here on top, and I put two Gatling turrets on the side, uh, rather than the two rocket launchers over here and three Gatlings. And I also moved the um, Gatling guns, and I put them under there. I thought that was a little bit more concealed. And from the back, again, it's still a little bit more elongated than the actual reference that I was going off of. But again, I was just going off of my noggin. Um, and I hadn't actually looked up a picture in a while. But you can kind of tell what I was going for, I hope. I, I hope. And then I did actually inset the connector a little bit. Or rather, I brought the hull down a block more than I intended to. And we got a merge block here, which is essentially going to be for the... Um, the ATR, or Atmospheric Transfer Ring, again, <clears throat> TM. Um, so, yeah, th that's that's how that's going to work. But, and because it's going to be basically landing with atmosphere, with an, with the, uh, the ring on it, I figured I didn't really need landing gears. Um, and if I did anything to where this could land on its own, I might load in the maglock. Um mod and put like a maglock there and maybe over there and then put like one up here on the nose um but considering like i said if it's out in space well i guess you i guess you could throw those on there just because of the reason of if you were docking with a capital ship you wouldn't have the transfer ring um so you might still need landing gears to dock with it so i might throw those in at a, at a later date 
Um, but yeah, I also had these versions to show you guys kind of the stages um, that I went through. I don't really know that I need this one too much anymore. This was kind of a, a backup copy in case I, I screwed something up. But this one was really the more... Uh, basically this version, but I cut the hull open so I could show you guys what ultimately ended up being the guts. Um, there's still a little bit of room here and there where I could put more batteries or other stuff kind of thing. I did end up going with void thrusters mainly because they were quick and simple and I didn't have to fiddle fart with um, having a bunch... Well, no, if, I, if I'm being honest, two reasons. One, I could turn thruster damage back on and these would not hurt the ship. Um, the other being that these have the nice little cosmetic bonus of with an enclosed ship like this, you won't actually see any thruster trails um, coming up and out of the side of the ship because I, I don't know if there's a way around that at all as far as when the devs made the game and stuff. I don't know if that's something that, that you could code in a way to fix it or if it was done on purpose for thruster damage, I'm not sure. But if you put like a thruster block right there and then fly away, you get the, the trail coming out through the, the armor, even if thruster damage is off. And I, I'm not a fan of that. It, it bothers me. One thing I will say is the the Void Thruster mod is seems to be partially broken. And what I mean by that is we're in creative, so in creative, nothing should be incomplete. When you place a block, it should just be there. And these work. Um, if I jump in this real quick and we go to Void, you can see that these are fully functioning and operating, right? Um, now I haven't actually tested the power consumption and all that kind of stuff to make sure it works, so I hope it works. But if I plant these small ones, which was the original intent, I was gonna, you know, fill in these little crevices with small void thrusters to maximize space. But if I go in here now, uh, these come up as incomplete. And I don't know why, because again, in creative they shouldn't be. So I'm thinking there's a partial break in the mod where it's not really working quite right. Um, but I will say there's one void thruster in each direction. Um, I didn't mirror the void thrusters. I mirrored pretty much everything else, but I didn't mirror those. And with that, um, she actually moves pretty good. I, I did add, I think, two more gyroscopes, so I th think it totals four? Or is it six? Six gyroscopes. There's three in the front there, three in the back. Um, and two backup reactors. Again, I haven't really tested the actual power and stuff, so I don't know if this is enough or not. Um, with the amount of batteries that I have on here, it moves really good though. It's a, it's a quick little ship. Whee! And, and, and I will say this, uh, theoretically, if I'm being honest, I don't think I'd actually need the atmospheric transfer ring at this point. I don't know, because when I had it moving like this before, I don't really remember if I had more than one void thruster in each direction or not. And if I did, then that's probably why I could make the atmosphere. Uh, but it it moves like a cool little fighter. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It did just occur to me that I'm missing a beacon. I need to put a beacon in here somewhere um, so that I can find her and thing. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's take advantage of our creativeness and go in here with... Um, oh, and an antenna! I didn't even think of that either. So let me find a spot. Okay, probably in the butt wouldn't be a bad idea. See, I've got more room down here on the bottom uh, than any other place. Because I extended the hull down here more than I originally intended to. So let's actually put it... How about we put it right under here? Will it fit here? I forget how small these guys are. Oh, they're tiny. Okay, yeah, this will work fine. Uh, let's throw you right there. And how big are the antennas? Oh, they're not big either. Alright, so we'll throw an antenna... or antennae. Can I put it right there? Put it right there. That works. 
So we have an antenna and we have a beacon now. So that's cool. Um, apparently we're already picking up... Ooh, you know what? This gives me an idea. Hold on a second. I totally forgot, by the way, to even begin to mention that I did throw in the Uncle Stays? Stees? I don't know how you're supposed to say that. Uh, ramp mod in here. Uh, you can, I don't know if it was really necessary for this stuff. It was just convenient for building because I only had to place one block instead of two and I didn't have to scroll, so it saved me some time. I may go back and convert these only because they don't uh, do the connected texture thing, which I do think would make it look a little less um, mismatched or whatever you want to call it. So I may go back and adjust these like corner ones and ramps and stuff to be the vanilla ones, but I really needed it for... Actually, you know what? Now that I'm looking at it, I don't know that I really did, to be honest. There's only one spot that I ended up really keeping one of the ramps uh, from that mod, which is right back here. And I'm not a big fan of this corner, to be honest. Um, it's kind of the one eyesore in the build so far. I mean, it's even here. And it's even back here, and all that, but it, it, I don't like it, but it was the only way I could really get all of the different angles to line up. But to be quite honest, I moved so much stuff around, I ended up kind of doing it without much else from the mud. It's literally these two blocks on both sides that is all that I really need. The rest could be converted to regular ramps. But since we're talking, um, since we're talking about what what would happen, uh, actually, I wonder if I should load the ship up and then so ah, let's just go for it. I was gonna say I, I might switch up the um, I might switch up and go to survival to do this, but we're just testing. It doesn't really matter if we blow anything up or whatnot. Um, so let's actually see how she performs when we get a little get into combat here. I, I did make a save. That's what I was... That's why I did the cut there. I don't know what the range on these... Like I said, I haven't really done combat in forever, so I don't know what kind of range is what and so on and so forth, but I figured it wouldn't be a bad idea to test this out and see what she does. Um, actually, it says mining transport. It might not even fight back, which would kind of stink. Um... Oh, I just realized I'm in creative, but I, it used up ammo. That's weird. I didn't think it would do that. One nice thing is with the Void Thrusters, this thing moves and stops on a flippin' dime. It's great. Ooh, there she goes. Wait, where's my guns? Oh, we're getting torn up. My aim is terrible. I'm pretty sure I have block damage on it too, as well, by the way. Go for the guns! Ooh, go for the guns! Ah. Actually, this is way more fun than I remember. Oh, we got it! You're toast! Oh, wait, I don't know what's going on there. Wait, what are we still shooting at? I don't know how this thing targets stuff, but, um... And since they did the visual update, though, this this is a lot more fun than I remember doing it before. I think it's- I think it is a lot of the graphical improvement, though, because... Graphically, they've added a lot more particle effects and lighting and... Stuff like that. But that's cool. Ooh, let's do it without a HUD. There we go. That'll make for a much better thumbnail. Oh, wait, what just hit me? Something just hit me. Does it still have what? Does it still have weapons? Oh, yeah. Oh, pfft. that was good. The ship doesn't kill me, I'll just crash into stuff. Hey, it's like me playing a leap. It's no different. All right, now see, here's the problem I'm, I'm seeing, though. Oh, look at that, we've got cracks in the glass. That's funny. Here's the problem I'm seeing. Um, 
if we're out in space and I were to attack something like this, right? To collect and, and do what... Um... How do I stop it? And I don't need, I don't mean my turrets, but just how do I stop it from flying through space? <laughs> like, that seems, um... Seems like it could be a problem. Tell you what, let's also set... Where's toggle? Toggle, 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 toggle. On off. Um, and then where's my two chain gun turrets? Toggle on off. Uh, where'd you go? Where did he go? Is that it? Hang out there? This e By the way, this episode is going entirely different than I had planned on. Let's see if we can catch up to it. I don't have, um... <laughs> we blew up the beacon, so I don't have a beacon on it anymore. But, uh... We'll just let her coast for a minute. Um, not too terrible. I lost my chain gun. Wait, did I? Yeah, I lost my chain gun. Um, the side got torn up pretty good. I think the turrets located where they are is a good idea because... Um, that actually, that didn't get hurt too bad. I definitely like the idea of the shield mod for obvious reasons. Um, but all, overall it didn't, uh, it didn't get too bashed in too badly. And I don't know if it would be worth doing to, um, I don't know, maybe do like, uh, not the, convert it to heavy armor, maybe? I don't know how much it would take a hit from flying and stuff um, in terms of the weight. That might be something I might try in SE Toolbox and see if converting it to heavy armor would work or not. Alright, so we caught up to it. Oh, we did some damage. But see, this is the problem. <laughs> it's just flying away. And, uh... I think I have a loose block in here somewhere. I wonder if I were to do this and then we were to like synchronize the speed. Can I? I'm not trying to pull a Fast and the Furious or whatever and like jump out or anything, but I'm trying to see if I could synchronize with the speed. If I could just kind of like slowly bring it to a stop or something. Because I'm just thinking, the whole point of attacking ships, or at least from what I understand, is to essentially capture them and take their loot. You know, their parts and whatnot. So if you can't really get a hold of the ship that you're damaging, kind of what's the point? Um, that's kind of what I'm thinking. So, this isn't really much of an... Uh, uh, you know, like a latch-on kind of ship. Alright, can we slow you down? Maybe? <laughs> I don't know what's that. I don't think I'm slowing it down. I think I'm just changing its direction. <laughs> so... Oops! Wrong button. Eh! No. Going, going the wrong way. Flying in this view is not easy. Alright. Uh nope, 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 back that way. Slow down. Slow down and come to a complete stop. That's an order. Pull over. Um oh that's what I should do. I should put red and blue strobes on this. That would be hilarious. <laughs> uh actually I think it would make sense, to be honest, because I believe in the Sonic show, the SWAT bots were kind of like Robotnik's police, I think. So it would kind of make sense. So yeah. And then if we turn on th <laughs> the dampeners, it just flies right past us. But overall, we didn't, uh, we didn't do too bad. Uh, a lot of the hull got damaged. But again, in theory, if we had a, um you know, a, a kind of home base to bring the ship back to, 
And as long as the merge block was still intact, we could essentially hook this to the atmospheric ring, bring it back down to the base, and then, you know, we could just dock it at the projector and it could repair itself using the nanite mod and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's an interesting idea. I do think I've got a loose block in here somewhere. Because I keep banging something around. But, uh, yeah, it didn't work too bad, though. Alrighty, so we're back on the refreshed save with the uh, significantly less damaged ship. Um, and I think, I think this one I might actually keep a copy of. Because, um... I think this one's actually pretty good to go. I don't see, other than adding the mag locks for landing gears and then working on the ATR, I don't really see much I want to change to it other than there is one aspect to it. Um, there's power, obviously, that I wanted to play around with a little bit. Um, so it seems like just by default floating here, we have two days of power on the... Um, multiple batteries or whatever, because in creative, I think they're... I'm pretty sure in creative, it's done as if it was like 100% all the time, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, feel free. Um, but being out in space, we wouldn't have to do a whole lot. Like, you could push forward, get it up to full speed, it says you have 10 hours left, dampeners off, let her coast. Kind of thing, uh, since you're in space. Wow, this thing does move really good. I really like it. Um, so there is that. So I think power-wise we're good, especially considering it's designed to be more of a space, and if you were flying around in an atmosphere, you'd have the ring with the hydrogen thrusters, so it'd be hydrogen-powered, and you wouldn't be, uh, using the, uh, void thrusters at all, really. I'd, I'd like to get it to that point, where if you're in the atmosphere, you're running off hydrogen thrusters in the rings, and if you're, um... You know, if you're doing if you're doing the uh, flying around in space, then you're using void thrusters, and you're and you kind of detached the ATR or whatever. Um, another idea that I had is if we were to build a capital ship that stays out here, obviously you wouldn't bring it down into space. But if we built a capital ship having literally like rings, uh, a docking ring, and I mean that as in not like a ring shape, but you could actually dock the atmospheric rings. Um, detach them and then park the SWAT bot hover unit, whatever you want to call it. Um, I gotta name that at some point. Um, but we could, you know, use the ATRs, fly up here, dock it with the capital vessel, and then if you send them out in space, you could just send them out like this. And then if you send them back down, you dock them up, and then you bring the ring down with you. That's kind of the idea that I had. Um, the other thing I wanted to try is turning off the batteries and turning on, um, the backup reactors to see what it says for power on those. Oh, the backup reactors are on. I wasn't running off battery power. Okay, well that changes things. Okay, actually battery power says it's higher. So that was a derp on my part. So battery powered, we'd actually be doing better um, in terms of our power usage. And then in an emergency, we could click that on, click on our, our reactor. So I actually did pretty decent without really knowing what I was doing, to be quite honest. Because like I said, I normally do creative builds and stuff. I've never really done a lot of ships outside of creative. Um, and I know I'm building this in creative, but I meant I never really use them outside of creative as far as I build them, but then I would move on to another build or I'd change up my series or something like that. I never really got around to using half the ships that I built. Um, so in terms of survival usage and power and all that, I'm, I'm not really that familiar or skilled with it at this point. So I'm actually kind of surprised that I hit pretty close to this being uh, a little strike vessel. Like it's not designed to be just out here floating around forever and always. Um, but it actually could serve its purpose kind of thing, and I think that's, that's kind of cool. Um, so what else? We need the maglock, uh, landing gears on here, and then we'll need to build the ATR ring. Um, but I can't think of anything else other than maybe ammo. We didn't really test out ammo too much because, you know, it's, it's creative, but, um, the turrets chew through ammo pretty good. 
and then it goes back to like 300 so I, you definitely need a good stock of rounds and i don't know how she'd fly fully loaded if we had a, the um cargo boxes full of ammo and stuff i'm not really sure how it would how it would do so that's another test we could run at some point but i don't think we're going to do it today um with that said i think that's all of the content side that i'm going to cover today so if you guys are just interested in the episodic type content then feel free to uh consider this uh calling it quits for this episode if however um oh yeah i forgot about mag boots i can stand on my ship <laughs> If, however, uh, you're interested in some of the behind-the-scenes stuff, some real talk type thing, um, then stick around, because I think that's what I'm going to get into at this point. So one thing I wanted to say was a lot of people are probably familiar, because the last couple episodes I've brought up um, the, uh, hmm, I guess, lack of direction or motivation for Space Engineers lately as a series. Um... And I do apologize for that. Only not that it's not that it's not uh, not that it's a problem to get burned out or feel like you don't want to do the same thing all the time. But mainly for, um, I feel like I've been kind of phoning in the the episodes lately. It's like it's it's another week, so it's another episode, so you have to do it. Um, but I really haven't had a whole lot of motivation. And so I've been doing the episodes, but they're, I'm sure a lot of you have noticed that they haven't been that great lately, because I've been feeling that they are. I just didn't really say anything, because I didn't really have anything to, to back it up with as far as any solutions or whatever. A um, couple of things is um, I've been pushing really hard on my book, so that's been uh, keeping my focus fairly well occupied. Um, I think I'm on the... 15th or 16th chapter so I have like five four or five more to to finish doing revisions on before I get into the having it edited by somebody and starting to talk to artists for cover arts and stuff so I'm getting close but I probably got another uh at least week of revisions or two um and then it'll be I don't know how long editing and stuff will take I've never done it before so that'll kind of be a play by ear but that's been kind of my focal point um and so when it came to episodes, it was kind of the afterthought type thing is it's, you know, I'm, I'm doing it to keep traction with the channel so that when I put something out, you know, I've, I've built up an audience and stuff of people that I can reach out to and stuff like that. But as far as it used to be kind of like YouTube was my primary focus and now my projects have started becoming my primary focus because YouTube really isn't making, uh, it, it's it's improving, I'm growing in subscribers and everything, which I always appreciate from you guys, um, but in terms of getting something to where I could essentially turn it into a business that I could do for a living, it, it's showing me it's not really going to do that. Um, and so I've had to change my focus up to, you know, uh, my book projects one thing i'm working on i want to see how that does and see if i could actually turn that into kind of what i do for a living or after my book gets released i may switch gears and work on a game because caden red pearl and i have been theorizing different game ideas and small stuff we could start off with and just set a biting off more than we can chew um and for those of you that don't know i've said this before i think once or twice but for those of you that don't know uh, that's always been the end game for him and I, where we've been best friends for a long time and always wanted to make our own video games, write our own stories, you know, if we had the budget, make our own movies kind of thing, um, animes, animation, whatever. Basically, we're just creators. We, we're very creative people, and we have stories and games and ideas and stuff to tell. So eventually, that's part of why I'm focused on my book and stuff like that, is it's kind of the first step in getting more into the creative side rather than just uh, let's plays and stuff like that. It would actually be one of my first projects that was, um, you know, a, a sellable item merchandise kind of thing that it's something that I created that's, uh, it's actually part of a, a universe him and I've been developing for years now. Um, not, not necessarily the specific events of the book, but just the, the, the world, how the world works, um, who are the people, who are the different species, what's the landscape like, plot points you know we have quite a few stories planned for for the universe that the book is set in um to the point that i don't want to i don't want to sell it wrong like i don't want to downplay the book's importance because it is a big step for me to be uh kind of the first 
entry in that universe that would be public and not just between him and I, but it would actually be something that other people, it's like you're exposing them to this universe. So it is a big deal. Um, but in terms of scope, the book is more small scale scope to some of the ideas and stories we have planned to do. But again, it would be like saying, uh, it would be like saying if you, if you were thinking from a game level, it would be like saying I have stuff like Witcher 3 and Skyrim scale planned, or The Old Republic, or WoW, you know, big, 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 long games with huge open worlds, big storyline. It'd be like saying I have that planned, uh, but I started with a game like, uh, I, I don't know, uh, somewhere between like Mario and Castlevania. You know, it's like it's, it's something a little bit more on the smaller scope where it's like it's an action adventure instead of this open world or, you know, 300 hour RPG. So it's kind of the same idea is rather than starting with these huge entries, especially having never written before. I mean, I'm aware that I'm an aspiring novelist, so it's not like I'm Stephen King or something that I've been doing this a while and I don't care about, you know, uh, pulling, you know, like a George Martin and writing a Game of Thrones size book. Um, it's, it's a big undertaking just to write a book in general, so I didn't want to bite off more than I can chew and then not be able to finish it or not do it correctly or something like that. So I, I decided to start smaller, and there was actually a time period in our storyline, in, in our, uh, in our universe where it was kind of a dead zone. We really hadn't written much for that time period, so it worked out perfectly to put some a smaller adventure-type series in there, and it wouldn't really affect anything in the grand scheme of things because nothing really important was going on in that timeline anyway, so it, it wouldn't matter. Um, but so yeah, that's I'm so close to the edge of, of finishing it with only a few more chapters to revise, and then it's pass it off to an editor and work with them to get it polished up, and then work with a book cover artist, and then set up your Amazon stuff, and set up, you know, um, but all of that stuff is kind of the detail work. It's not the bulk of writing the book, so I'm really close to being done with that, so I've really tried to focus on that and get it finished, because I'm like, I, a lot of you probably aren't aware of this, but you can actually check this in my YouTube stuff. You can look at my series, and you'll see the same pattern as I'm about to tell you. I'm terrible at finishing stuff. I'm terrible at it. Um, once I finish it in my head, like I follow it through to completion, it's almost like I get bored after that because my mind already knows where it's going to end. Um, and you can even see that with some of my, my YouTube series that, you know, I'd work on building a ship and it either I'd switch gears because it wasn't generating views or I got bored or something like that. Um, so it's something I'm really working on, to be honest, is like, you started something, so finish it before you switch gears and do something else. Um, which has been problematic, because Caden's been, you know, in my ear, plugging at me, you know, it's like, hey, we should do a game, hey, we should do a game, hey, and I'm like, I gotta finish the book first, don't tempt me, you know, <laughs> so, um, and then there's Dog Squad, which is still in limbo at the moment, because, um, uh, Essentially, what's really what's really going on there is um, all of us have essentially gotten busy in our personal lives, uh, and so we never finished all of the audio part because once all the audio is done, most all of it falls on my shoulders at that point. Um, I do the animating, I do the the set building, I do the editing, blah 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 blah. blah. I mean, it's essentially my series. I've kind of co-created it with Caden that um, I, you know, I'd call him and be like, hey, I'm trying to work on it. What do you think about this? Or could we do it this way? Or what's your, you know, so he would help me out a lot. And Adrian Wannafly one time, once or twice, uh, a couple of times actually helped me with some of the script things where I was uh, running ideas by him as far as like things to do with flounder and stuff. And he would be like, oh, what if we did this? So, you know, everybody kind of helps in their own way, but as far as the majority of the project is usually on my shoulders. Actually, having said that, for all of you that are still here, for all of you that are still listening, if any of you are like um, uh, space engineers builders type thing, especially if you've ever been featured in the Inspiration series before, anything like that, um, I'm actually wondering about uh, maybe trying to... Uh, pull in some other people for building the ships and the sets because I'm not, as you can tell, I mean, I can build okay, but it's taken me forever to do this one tiny little ship. And then I get people on the Inspiration series like um, 
oh, what's the, I forget, there's like three of them that I remember off the top of my head, but I can't remember their names now. One's Tartarus, I, I know, uh, him and I have had conversations on Steam and in comments and stuff enough that I'm, I'm familiar with his work. Um, and there's another, there's another guy, or I say guy, I don't know, there's another person on the Inspiration Series Workshop stuff that, that was really, really skilled with detail on small ships. Tartarus was one of them, um, but there's another one that, that their small ships just look so packed full of detail and stuff. Um, and so, stuff like that, there's just a lot of people that are better than me, so I, I never liked passing off the design ideas, because I'm... Like I said, I'm not in a position where a lot of this stuff is really, like, professional budget. Like, I can hire actors or, you know, pay people to do high-quality stuff. So it's usually just whatever I can, you know, however good I can make it. You know, I put forth the best that I can. Um, but it was like, I always felt shady about, like, contacting somebody like that and like, Hey, can you build me a ship for this series that would become an iconic ship that's going to be the bad guy's ship for multiple seasons of the show and I might use it in comic books and I might use it in games and then like I'm not really paying them for their design it's their design it would be the same as like taking somebody's 3d model and just using it without permission kind of thing so I never really wanted to ask but what I'm thinking about is if I could come up with my own designs but then have someone else build it I could give them credit for building it but then it's still my design overall and then I wouldn't feel too bad about just basically doing it for accreditation type thing and not for you know royalties or payments or whatever because there's no way I can do that um, so if you're a builder and that sounds interesting to you feel free to reach out to me because um, I may be th sending out messages to a couple people on the mod group thing of of uh, contacts that I have anyway, so if you, you know, but if you're, if you're watching this and it, and it caught your ear, then let me know. But anyways, so I kind of got off on a, on, on a rant there that really wasn't the point. The point I was trying to make was my attention has been kind of pulled away from my YouTube episodes, and particularly Space Engineers, because I was already kind of distracted and, and not as focused on YouTube at all as much. Not at all, but in general, I was not my primary focus anymore. Um, but then when the, uh, the blog thing and the Q&A live stream came out from Keen, where, uh, I don't want to put words in the mouth, and a lot of times developers get, um, you know, it taken out of context or something like that, so I, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but the way it came off, the way it sounded to me, uh, was that they were trying to wrap up Space Engineers in that we're trying to optimize it and polish off what's there and stuff and kind of call it a day and move on to another project. They did not say that in so many words, but it seemed like the general impression they were giving. And that bothered me a little bit because to me it's still very, very much an early access game and I do not feel that it's anywhere close to really being able to be like, okay, we're done. Now, like I said, I don't want to take that statement out of context because they could be talking two, three years in the pipeline of we're we're finishing off adding new features, blah 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 blah, and then we're wrapping it up. It just didn't sound that way to moi. They could be saying that I don't know, um, but it it put a kind of well why bother type of attitude. I guess you could I guess you could say in the back of my head. And so anytime I went into survival worlds or building or what, it was just like why am I doing this? What's what's the point? Um, but I do think I actually got a comment a couple episodes ago, it wasn't the last one, that somebody made a really good point of um, Minecraft's not that much different in terms of being very open-ended, so you kind of have to decide what you want to do for you. The biggest thing for, for me is, and I can't, I can't really say why, I really don't know why one works and one doesn't, but when you deal with something like Minecraft, building a house or a base. Something about it just feels more rewarding to me. And this is a me thing. I can't speak for everybody else. I know there's a lot of people that have played this for a long time, and maybe it's because I've played it for a long time without a break. Um, there's a lot of, like, Minecraft people, like Etho, well, not Etho, I think he still does it, but Generic B and B-double-O in them, that have dwindled their Minecraft content, or in the case of, like, Generic B, I don't really know that he's doing it that much anymore at all. Um... And he even mentioned, it was because like, I, I watched generic B&B dubs a lot, and uh, he even mentioned, you know, it's just I've been doing it 
almost since I started my channel and I'm just getting burned out. And I think I might be running into a similar situation with space engineers. Now, I have to admit, that space fight was kind of fun. I didn't like how much damage my, my ship took. I don't like having to repair my stuff, but I like fighting stuff. That was pretty fun. So, I don't know. Um, we might keep going with it. Um, if we do, the idea that I kind of had in my head is to... We've got this ship now kind of squared away. So it would be to build the transfer ring. Um, and then possibly start into... I don't know, maybe work on a capital ship that can carry multiples of these or something? I don't know. Um, I'm not really sure where I'd want to go from there. Um, but... I definitely think the atmospheric transfer ring and stuff would, would be something I do, I, I do want to do before I ever called it quits on this particular season of the series or something like that. And the hard part, and this is, again, this is kind of the real talk section of the episode. So the hard part for me as a content creator is a, I, I'm, I'm not disillusioned that the majority of my fan base is here from Space Engineers. I started with Minecraft, but it was very, very small. I think I had like 40 subscribers. Within like a month of doing Space Engineers, I had like 400, and it, it grew exponentially from there. So Elite Dangerous and Space Engineers have always been the two biggest pulls to my channel. So I have a hard time because even if I'm getting bored with it or I'm getting you know, uh, not motivated or kind of floundering in focus, I don't know that it would be smart, I guess, to take away the Space Engineer series. Now, I will say this, if I were to do that, the Inspiration series probably won't go anywhere. Um, but in terms of the Let's Play survival part, I don't know how big of an impact that would make on the fans of the series and my channel and stuff like that. So, you know, full full open open season for for feedback on that. If if you guys are like, yeah, no, you've been doing it a while. We can tell you're kind of bored. Uh, let's do something else. Let me know that. If it's like, I uh, you know, just kind of refocus up and here's some ideas you could do and pick one of these and then you know keep keep plugging along. Let me know about that too. But um, so I don't really. I'll, I'll be honest. I don't really know where this is gonna go. Um, for the immediate future, we're going to be working on finishing up this ship and building the transfer ring, and then I'll probably switch back over to survival, build a projector thing and stuff to get it built in survival. But after that point, um, I don't know where we'll go from there. Um, I'm not really sure. I'll have to kind of gauge how I feel and if I can come up with some new project or new idea to work on or something like that. But in the meantime, I have talked you guys' ears off long enough, so we're going to wrap things up here for this episode. Um, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.